Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of my YouTube channel, Data Science with Sam. This vlog is the final video of my deep learning series that I started a couple of months back. So let's do a recap of this deep learning series. So in this series, I covered different aspects of deep learning and how it's been evolved in the artificial intelligence space in last couple of decades. Now you know what are the main components of neural network, which is the main building block of deep learning model. You know what are the main model hyperparameters that we should select when you build a neural network model. I also gave you an overview of convolutional neural network model, which is one of the important neural network model in the deep learning space. You know how the model architecture looks like when you perform image classification exercise using convolutional neural network model. So later in that series, I introduced another video to cover the main aspects of two very important machine learning libraries. One is PyTorch and another is TensorFlow and how it played crucial role in building CNN models in um, the artificial intelligence and deep learning work. But now you don't know how exactly you can build a CNN model using these two libraries. In my previous video, I obviously gave you an idea of how we can uh, give, uh, how we can actually present these two libraries in a simple mathematical operation coding perspective. And I would definitely recommend you to go back to my YouTube channel and see that video before we proceed forward. Because it's important for you to know the key difference between these two libraries before you understand how you can build a CNN model using these two libraries. So if you already watched that video, then let's go to the next section where I'm going to show you how you can build a CNN model using PyTorch and TensorFlow. And for this exercise, I'm going to use a very popular fashion MNIC data set, which comprised of 60,000 training images and 10,000 test images. So let's check out and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel because more videos on data science and artificial intelligence and deep learning are forthcoming. In this section, I'll show you the, how we can implement a CNN model using PyTorch and TensorFlow. For this particular exercise, I'm using a very popular fashion MNIST data set, which comprised of 60,000 train images and 10,000 test images. Now you must be wondering that how we will load the fashion MNIST data set first. So let's check it out. So in the first coding exercise, you have to load the libraries. So we have to load the TensorFlow and the PyTorch libraries first, as you can see on the screen. In addition to that, sometimes we have to load NumPy libraries in case if you need to perform any mathematical operation in the later part. Now, how we can get and split the data? Okay, so for the TensorFlow, it's very straightforward. The Keras library, uh, the, the Keras module of TensorFlow library have the fashion MNIST data set inbuilt. So we just load the fashion MNIST data directly from the Keras library. And then we will also load the associated training and test level, as you can see over here. But for PyTorch, we have to perform some explicit uh, transformation. For PyTorch, we have to perform, uh, and I have to convert the variables into a tensor object. So here we are actually performing a transformation to convert that into a tensor transform object. And then after that, we use the transform object to load the fashion MNIST data inbuilt in Torch Vision Library to this train underscore data set and PyTorch and test underscore data set and PyTorch variables. So these two variables are loading the train and test data set accordingly. Now, the next thing is we have to visualize the data. So for TensorFlow, all the images are into zero, between zero to 255 scale. So that means these are all RGB images. So when you are visualizing one image uh, through TensorFlow, you will see that it's an RGB image. However, for PyTorch, it's more of like a grayscale image. So it does not transform the image to an RGB. So originally this fashion MNIST data set has all grayscale image. So all the images are like 20 by eight by 28 and it's a channel one means grayscale image. So in PyTorch, it doesn't do any explicit transformation of the color. So in that case, uh, the PyTorch will only show you the grayscale image as it is showing right now. In addition to that, in PyTorch, we also use a data loader function. So that data loader function is responsible for loading the data set to train loader and test loader object. So later on, this train loader and test loader object being used to train the model and then predict the results accordingly. 
So now let's dive into the model building section. Because as you know that for this particular exercise, we are using a pre-existing architecture, Lenet 5, which was built back in 1998. So let's go to the next session and see how we can implement that CNN model architecture using PyTorch and TensorFlow. Now let's see we can build a model. So here we are actually going to implement the Linet 5 architecture. So in the Linet 5 architecture, we have like two convolutional layer and in between we have like two like uh, average pool layer. So those average pool 2D layer kind of resembles with the max pool layer where we are kind of downsampling the image dimension. So let's check it out the Linet 5 architecture before we proceed to the core section. So here we are actually providing an input of 28 by 28 image. And then in the first convolutional layer, what is doing that the input dimension is six by 28 by 28. So that's the first convolutional layer. In the later part, uh, when we apply the average pool layer, it downsample the images by kernel two and padding two. So it's kind of like divided by uh, two. So it transform it to C six by 14 into 40. Then after that, we, we uh, supply this uh, feature map to the next convolutional layer. So in the next convolution layer, we transforming that to 16 by 10 by 10 image uh, feature map. So in this feature map, it uh, kind of like corresponds to the next uh, convolutional layer. And then after that, we downsample it again using another average pool to the layer. So now it becomes 16 by five in by five. So the final feature map before we proceed to the fully connected layer is 16 by five by five. Now, once we flatten that layer, so if you multiply this number, it will come as 400. And that is the input dimension for the flattened layer. And in the output dimension, we are considering as 120 for the first, uh, well, uh, first flattened layer, which we will transform into the linear one. So in the linear layer section, we have uh, a 120 by 84 uh, feature map. So this 84 di output dimension is kind of like the input dimension of the final output layer. So in the output layer, we have the 84 by 10. And the reason the final output dimension is 10, because here we are predicting 10 classes of uh, different images. As I said earlier that this fashion MNI status, it has 10 different labels based on different uh, fashion items. So this 84 by 10, 10 is the final feature map of the output layer. So now how are we gonna implement that in TensorFlow and in PyTorch? So in TensorFlow, we use the sequential model and then under the sequential model, we actually, um, um, in sequential model, we actually perform all the convolutional and other layer steps. So we, we add the convolutional layer, the average pool layer. We also apply the flatten function to flatten that term layer uh, before we pass that uh, feature map to a linear layer. And then finally, we use the final uh, class like 10 as the output dimension of the output, you know, final layer. But in PyTorch, this, the implementation of uh, CNN model building is a little different. Uh, instead of just relying on one particular module or function here, we have to first uh, define a class neural net using the NN dot module, which, uh, which is part of the uh, neural uh, PyTorch library. So here, uh, what we are doing that class neural net initializing all the layers. So it initially all the layers uh, using NN sequential. So here you can see that we, um, in, in, in terms flow, we apply all the linear layer and convolutional layer under one sequential function. But here for PyTorch, we have to basically segregate that sequential function between uh, convolutional layer and uh, linear layer. If you, here you can see we have two different uh, CNN sequential function. One is for the CNN model, the convolutional part, and another one for the fully connected layer, linear layer part. And then later on, we use this forward function that will override the NN model. And that kind of like combine both the sequential functions together. And based on the forward functions, uh, the sequence, the sequence of the forward function, the PyTorch uh, module will execute the model building phase or the model uh, training phase. So, so that's how actually PyTorch and TensorFlow build a CNN model. So from implementation standpoint, these are different. As you can see, the TensorFlow only used one sequential function, whereas PyTorch used multiple sequential function for CNN uh, layer and also for fully connected linear layer. 
Now let's move on to the next section that how they are, um, the, or how the model hyperparameter has been selected for this particular exercise. So in terms of model hyperparameter, TensorFlow and PyTorch uh, kind of follow similar kind of techniques. They all uh, have a different kind of like compilation function. Uh, so like for here in TensorFlow, we are compiling it with a categorical cross entropy loss function. The reason we are using categorical because we have more than two classes here. So instead of binary cross entropy function, we are using categorical Categorical. Uh, we also using Adam optimizer. Uh, it's literally up to you. You can use SDD or other Adam Boost or any other kind of optimizer for your exercise. Uh, similarly, for PyTorch, also we are uh, following the same pattern of applying uh, cross entropy, uh, categorical cross entropy loss, and Adam optimizer to compile the model. So this is kind of like a summary of the model, as you can see, uh, coming out of like TensorFlow and uh, PyTorch model. Now, next part is uh, training the model. For TensorFlow, uh, training the model is very straightforward. Uh, you first have to normalize that um, of images because uh, in TensorFlow, we all have the images in uh, RGB format. But as you know, the, the actual fashion m and data set uh, is, uh, uh, um, you know, corresponds to like a grayscale image. So we have to normalize all the images before we, uh, uh, before we pass all the images to a model. So that's what we are doing over here. And then after that, we just, uh, run this uh, fit function, which will train the models using uh, epochs 30 and bat size 32. So here's another part you can see over here that uh, that um, mainly for the TensorFlow model, we are not passing the batch size explicitly during the training, uh, during the dataset loading phase. As you know, for PyTorch, we the data loader function use the batch size parameter. But here for TensorFlow, we usually uh, pass the batch size parameter during the model training phase. Uh, for PyTorch, uh, the training model uh, part is a little different here we are actually training the model based on different sequence. For, for each sequence, for each iteration or epochs, we actually calculate the loss and we also optimize that um, value. And based on that, we kind of like uh, provide our accuracy. Uh, so the training model for, for PyTorch is kind of like running a loop based on number of epochs or iteration you choose. And for each epoch and iteration, um, it will predict the image output, it will uh, uh, compile the function using an optimizer. It will also minimize the loss using different categorical cross entropy and then provide the results accordingly. So these are actually the uh, TensorFlow and PyTorch epoch and iteration. As you can see for the TensorFlow, the accuracy is going up 97.84. And here for here, the loss is kind of reducing for PyTorch. Now, next part is the prediction result, the final part. So here we, for TensorFlow, we are using the predict function to uh, predict the accuracy. And for PyTorch, we are just kind of like uh, getting the output from that model PI function based on the image uh, we will pass to the function, it will predict the output, and that's how we will calculate the accuracy. So we saw that uh, one that on the tail, when we run the uh, two models on 10,000 test images, TensorFlow ended up getting 90.47% accuracy, whereas PyTorch uh, was able to give 88% accuracy. We can definitely improve this accuracy by uh, running the model or training the model for more epoch counts, or maybe sometime we can perform um, some kind of a uh, image augment augmentation technique, like you know, rotating the image or transforming it into different uh, skills to improve the accuracy of the models. But in straightforward here, I mean, 90% is not bad uh, in your first uh, model building phase. So that's all for now. You know, like you can see that uh, how we can literally use both this library to build a very simple CNN model to classify images. So for fashion MNIST uh, data set, you have 10 labels. Maybe for your data science work, you may use um, a higher, bigger data set with more labels, but it's very simple to implement any sort of like CNN model using PyTorch and TensorFlow. You just have to make sure that you follow all the steps and follow the sequence of your layers, convolutional layers, and how it's followed by the linear layer. And also have to, you should make sure that your final output dimension should match with your number of classes that you're going to predict. So you're, if you're going doing the binary classification, your output dimension should be two. But for any other multi-class classification, you should make sure that your output dimension should match your total number of classes. So now let's move on to the next section to conclude this video. So this brings me to an end of the deep learning series that I started a few months back. 
Hope you all learned something about deep learning after watching a few videos in my YouTube channel for the last couple of months. As you know that computer in computer vision world or in some other aspect, deep learning is very emerging technique that uh, kind of taking the artificial intelligence world into the next level. So in uh, upcoming months, I'll definitely share more de deep learning related uh, contents and maybe we'll make some more videos based on image classification and object detection related to computer vision. So stay tuned for that. But for now, I'm gonna put an end to the deep learning series and I'll move to another exciting series based on unsupervised learning. As we all know that in machine learning world, unsupervised learning play a very crucial role because in so many cases, we don't know the outcome. So in those uh, area, we have to apply unsupervised learning technique to understand what will be the outcome of our machine learning model. So I'll talk about out, uh, uh, the unsupervised learning uh, for next couple of months in my next series. And also, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and share your commentary because that will help me to improve my contents and also share some key information related to data science and industry world. Because right, right now, there are so many things been going on around the world that I really want to cover in my data science uh, channel. And I would definitely um, need some input, uh, commentary and some suggestion from you all, which I can incorporate in my contents. And, Please look down in the caption as I share the GitHub source code of the machine learning scene and model building exercise which I shown in this video. And also, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and have a good weekend. So till then, good bye.